Seinfeld Summit is right around the corner and with me today is Christina Rossi. She'll be joining us on a panel with several other women who are gonna be talking about what doesn't beat us makes us stronger. So Christina, I'm so excited. I wanna hear more about what, what you wanna get from the, from the conference and what you wanna share without spilling the beans, of course. But could you take a few moments to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Laura. Uh, again, I've seen a lot of the um, content that you've been putting out. It's been great. I'm so excited to be a part of the Women Who Build Summit. Um, on the speaker side, it's really exciting. It's always been a terrific conference. Um, and I currently have been in the industry for over 17, probably closer to actually 20 years. Um, and I work for ONG and, um, it's also sort of grew up surrounded by the industry. I'm part of the family, um, the fourth generation of leadership. Um, and I'm just excited to be part of the women who build to just network and hear all the wonderful speakers and learn from my peers. And, um, it's just, I'm really excited. Bring well, back some good stuff. Yeah. It's so nice to, to talk to you. Uh, this year's a really exciting collection of, of women who are speaking. Uh, we also have a couple of men who are speaking too, which is nice too. I, I, I don't like to leave out our brothers, you know? Nope. <laughs> we need, they we do need exist. them. Yes. yes. <laughs> we want them and we need them. But um, most of the speakers are fresh to the, this particular summit. I, there's only, I think, that who I've spoken to too, who've even been to the summit before. And so it's really exciting that this year is gonna be completely new and fresh ideas, fresh faces, and the, the level of education and insight that I'm finding is just incredible. What is it that you really like about this particular conference, this particular summit? Um, well, I do think they're touching on some of the hottest topics out there. Um, you know, sustainability, obviously, that's just, that's been a to hot topic for a while, but even more so now, um, what people are doing with their facilities, how can we continue to green up, um, you know, the way that we operate out in the industry and and what we're doing um, as, a, as teams to make uh, the environment a better place. Um, and then also the AI blockchain, like all of the artificial intelligence. I cannot wait to hear some of that because uh, it's not something I know enough about and I'm looking forward to learning and continuing that process post-conference. Um, but they've got such a great like lineup of, of speakers that are going to be addressing all of that. And I just think it's going to be really exciting. I agree. I'm I'm very excited to hear what happened. I feel like I have a leg up on everybody after talking to so many people. I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. So if you're interested in this, then there's these two that are going to support each other. But if you're interested in that, then it's these three. <laughs> and I did get to speak to the keynote speaker, June. Oh she yeah. Ooh, did you see that interview? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to go look it up as soon as we're done because she's just legendary and trailblazer for over 50 years. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah, it, she's uh, so there are so many parallels between, you know, like what she's gone through and going through in um, the music industry and then, you know, what we experience in construction. There are on the surface, you're like, what? And then when you start talking to her, you're like, oh, there's a dot, there's a dot, there's a dot. And it just all connects one after the other. It's really, it's really awesome. And uh, she's just a spitfire. She's writing a second memoir right now. So that. yeah, it's so cool. Very cool. So Christina, your panel, you're on with uh, two other women and you are the three of you. This is a, a really cool um, panel because this one is really about sharing stories and talking about things that are are not as technically focused as the the majority of the other panels this one is much more personal and so I, I think it's tougher because it's harder to talk about yourself in this way and it's harder to share these these personal stories so there's a, a I, I gotta thank you and Marianne and Wendy for having the courage 
to to do this particular session because it takes a great deal of bravery to do it. The three of you are going to be sharing stories under kind of the heading of what doesn't beat us make makes us stronger. And really it's like, how did you face adversity and then still come out ahead, right? And so, you know, I like to look up words before I, I use them. And I looked up the word adversity. Now I know what the word of adversity means, but what does the dictionary have to say about it? <laughs> and um, very simple, a definition, you know, it's resilience in the face of difficulties and misfortune. And I, I think that that's an interesting kind of tonal definition because diversity implies that it's something outside of your own control, it's not a problem that you made for yourself. That's how I read into the definition. So yeah. what is it when you're looking back on, and I'm sure you're still going through a lot of the, the channel, the fallout from the challenges that you face what what is it that you want people to walk away with after hearing your story oh yeah i mean um it's certainly uh i think it's important in general um for women to hear other weekend women speak candidly about their career um and even personal experiences while pursuing their careers um, because there can be a lot of struggle while building yourself. And I've always found it helpful to hear from others. Um, you know, it's just inspirational and, you know, to know that you're not alone, despite whatever challenges you're facing. Um, and I really just want the audience to know that, you know, my, I'm not going to let my setback keep me from reaching my ultimate career goals. Um, and that, you know, success comes from pushing through the struggle and, um, you know, I'm not where I, where I want to be career goal wise. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not where I thought I would be, uh, today, but that doesn't mean I can't get there. Um, so that's part of the resilience, um, the piece of just being resilient in the, in the face of a challenge and accepting the challenge, um, so, you know, overcoming that is, is a big, is, is hard, but I want people to know that it's possible. Well, and I think that that's a really important, um, to know that it's possible is an important concept that whole, if you can see it, you can be it, um, thought. I, I like that one a lot because we all have challenges and you said too, like, to talk about it and be candid so that one, it's, it's a healing process for, for oneself to be able to speak about it, particularly in public, but also to, to be able to, to let people know that they're not alone and they're not the only ones facing um, a challenge or, or adversity and to watch and hear about people overcoming and that you can overcome it is such an important piece. What kinds of questions do you get from other women in our profession? Oh, um, you know, how do you do it all? How do you get back? You know, what was your strategy? You know, again, there's so many disruptors, if you will. I mean, it's hard to see in your 20s when you're just starting in your career and you're excited and you have time and you're, you know, doing everything right and you're learning. Um, it's hard to see that like anything could really disrupt your career. I mean, if I, my thirties were just, a, a not a mess, but they were busy and disruptive and very disruptive for my career. So I do get a lot of questions about like, how, you know, how did you manage, even how did you manage kids and a life outside of work and their lives and your, your husband. And, uh, and, and then obviously my cancer diagnosis was the big, dis biggest disruptor, unfortunately. And I will share more about that on the panel. Um, but again, I don't want to give away, spill all the beans. Uh, yeah. But I do get a lot of questions about like time management and, and it's, it's really just, there's not a perfect science. There's, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer um, to how you go about managing all of the things. Um, but that is one I get a lot. So when things 
started to feel like they were just a mushroom cloud, like completely uncontrollable. What were the things, what were some of your self-talk, your self-speak that helped you not necessarily get control because a mushroom cloud, you, you really can't control, but you have to kind of find your way through it. And it takes self-talk to be able to, you know, I love the phrase, put your big girl panties on. Yes. I know that might be a little controversial, but I mean, it, it says a lot, right? So, okay, what this is what I need to do. What are some of the self-talk that that's helped you get through? Oh man. Well, as a per, I, I am a perfectionist. I love to just complete tasks and get things done and I want everything to be perfect. Um, and, and I want, you know, soup to nuts, everything to be, you know, perfect all the time. And, um, having a diagnosis thrown at me was, you know, I initially addressed it as, okay, well, it's, it's one year of my life. I was really hitting my stride career wise. I was really even though it was a very stressful time for me, my career was really exciting. And I was felt like I was really going places. And anyway, so facing the diagnosis, it was like, okay, this is going to be one year. It's going to be chemo, surgery, radiation, done, back to work, you know, and let's go. We got this. It, I was thrown so many curveballs <laughs> during my journey. I can't even begin. And it, and it basically... I'll, you know, speak more about this in the, on the panel, but, um, it ended with COVID, which was another setback. So patience, patience, and patience and more patience has been, and really accepting that things are out of your control. You cannot control everything. You have to be patient to be good, to be kind to yourself. It's okay to take a beat once in a while. Um, and I've really learned, you know, that, it, that, you know, getting back into the swing of things immediately wasn't necessarily what I needed at the time. And that's like, that was hard. So um, really the, the patience part of this and, and self-acceptance has been the, that's been the internal discussion, you know, in my head. Yeah. That's the self-talk. So patience and self-acceptance, two key keywords in there. And then the other thing I heard you say is, you know, control, like you can't control everything. And this is something I speak about a lot when I'm talking to doing classes for developing leaders and um, project managers and things like that, particularly in the context of time management is step one, assess what can you control and what can you not control? That is the first like categorization step, right? And figure out, and sometimes, I don't know about you, but throughout my life, I've had these moments that you, uh, like there's this flash of insight, like an epiphany. And I call those my moments of maturity. And you can see them, right? Have you ever yeah. had it? Absolutely. Yeah, it's like, oh, Thing, wait <laughs> and all like all the pieces fall into place it's almost like the matrix like oh, oh I just grew up in that moment okay I got it and they still happen I haven't finished growing up yet <laughs> a real adult moment yeah yeah right. <laughs> You're like I have evolved I am mature I am an adult yes right and that, you know, that whole being able to not only figure out what's in your control and not in your control, but then being able to accept that that is not in your control and move on. And the more that you worry it, the more it becomes static and then a distractor and then an impediment and, and all of that. So that's why I think that that's a really good point that you made is first figure out what you can control and what you can't control. And then you can be mature as you would deal with those, the answers to those questions. Yep. <laughs> and it's hard to come from a place where you have been sort of controlling everything and doing everything. And then to have something thrown at you that's completely out of your control. It's a big, that was a big struggle to accept that things are so out of my control. And it's probably my best, you know, my biggest life lesson is that, you know, was, you know, to lessen that grip and 
you know, exactly assess what you can do today, what you can control right now and look at it in smaller pieces so that you don't feel like worry, static, overwhelmed. Right. So I fortunately have not had to face the kind of adversity that, that you have. And I've had um, friends who have faced similar adversity. I, I had a friend who had uh, congenital heart failure at 32. And it, um, so there's all kinds of things that can happen. And being a friend to several people, one of the things I find most difficult, selfishly, most difficult about being a friend to someone who is going through this kind of like trauma, scared, like terrifying, you know, what am I going to do kind of thing is how to be a great friend to that person. And I'm speaking from a point where my, the, the friend of mine who had that terrible heart issue, she, she's still alive. She's, she, she's doing well and her kids are doing well and all of that. Yes. But it was very, very scary there. And at some point after talking to her a lot, like I just wanted to be there and listen. But at some point I started to realize that she was bloody sick of talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, she had to talk to every family member on the planet. It was the thing that was foremost in her mind and, and all of that, um, that stuff. And so there was a point where I was like, oh, that's not being there for what she needs talking about it. Like, so how, what was the, what did you appreciate the most from your friends while you were going through it? How could your friends most support you through this adversity? Oh, um, again, I think, you know, talking about it is so funny because I feel like I probably did need to talk about it to them just to like walk through how I was feeling. It probably was a good talking about it actually probably helped me um, more than anything. Um, they were just really, I had a really incredible journey from the standpoint of like my friends were just incredibly supportive and my family incredibly supportive. I had um, people help with my children, bring meals, all kinds of special gifts that just made me feel wonderful. Um, there was a lot of just love. I felt so much love and strength from the community around me, which is really lovely, including the industry, which was just, you know, unexpected and even more lovely. Um, and, um, you know, I've gotten to a point now where I don't need to talk about it anymore. And it is, it is sometimes exhausting, but even when a friend, I mean, a friend, you know, I, people reach out all the time. Oh, I have know someone. What, what can I do? What can I, how can I help? Um, can you have any tips for her or him? Um, and it's been really lovely to be able to share my pieces of my experience um, because no one's experience is exactly the same, but to, to, if I can help someone now and it's through you know talking or just being a you know a beacon of hope or anything it's it's a win all day um so it's it you know it's it's sort of been a journey that's taken and given and taken and given so that's great i'm, I'm glad you gave some examples of what being supportive looks like because that sometimes is really hard like you have this person that you love that's going through so much and it's you feel a different kind of pain because you want to help them. You want to solve their problems. You want to remove it from them and you can't like you're helpless. So to get some examples of what it means to be supportive. So there's something people want to do something. Absolutely. To help yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes it's just so hard to figure out what to bloody do. Oh, absolutely. There's never a wrong answer though. You know, even just a text saying I'm thinking of you is enough. You know, it's it doesn't have to be some big plushy robe or something. You know what I mean? It's it any little gesture is I just appreciated everything large and small. I really did. Yeah, how many robes did you get over this process? <laughs> so many robes and so many pajamas and I still love them all, all of them. Yeah, yeah, because that is something that that I would do too. Like, okay, what do they need right now? Yeah. <laughs> what it can I great. get them right now? 
my, my story. Um, but there's other parts of my story too, that I I'm intending to share, you know, just like the journey of being a woman in the industry. And, um, when I started in 2004, there was no women. I mean, there was even PWC professional women in construction, uh, was transitioning from NAWIC to PWC to the Connecticut chapter was being, was being, you know, inaugurated. Um, and so I was part of that then there, that's when I started to actually meet women in the industry, but there wasn't a lot of women at ONG at the time. There wasn't, um, you know, there was a, there was a few and it's just been incredible to see the trajectory of women in the industry and how it's progressed over the last 20 years. Um, we have so many more women represented today in all types of roles from the field to marketing to, you know, HR, every function, there are more women across the board. Um, and I think the more people see women, the more they want them on their teams, the more they work with them, they want to be with them, the more, you know, it's different perspectives. It's, it's, there's so much more influence. Um, and I think the more women are out there, the more comfortable everyone feels too. Like, of course, there's a woman here. Of course, we have an all female team. Of course, we can do this, you know? And I, I think seeing that has just been such an amazing, um, it's just been amazing to witness and it's very evident now, now more than ever, I would say. So that's been really exciting. And I feel like I wish I had had more women that I could lead on earlier in my earlier career. And there was definitely a few that were incredible, but um, it, it feels like there's just a, a much larger pool now. Well, I agree with that. And my experience when I came in was very similar, like I'm an industrial engineer, one of two in my graduating class, you know, and I entered construction and there were hardly any women out there. But I'll tell you, in the early 2000s, in my experience, the women who were there were not supporting each other. It was like it was almost like there was this idea, like this unsaid rule that there was only one seat at the table and for, for a woman and everybody was fighting over it. Now things have changed and now we're not against each other for that one seat. There's We're creating more seats. We're bringing more chairs to the table, which um, is a different mindset, I think, than what, what was going on when I entered the, the field. Are you seeing that as well? Absolutely. Uh, same thing. There's more, there's more seats at the table for women. Um, I also feel like the stigma surrounding like a, a, you know, a career in construction, like actual fields, more field work has been, you know, we can't survive without women. There's, you know, skilled labor shortage and women bring so much to the table and are so, you know, just dynamic and great to work. And I'm not trying to, you know, put down the men, but um, it's, I just see the teams working better together. I feel like our successes are different. Um, it's just been really, really nice to see. It has. And I think that the men have changed a lot. These most recent generation uh, gener generations of men are are very different than earlier generations of men, and I think, and I think one of the most important behaviors that many men are doing that has caused a shift in in thinking is paternity leave, mm -hmm. and men actually taking the paternity leave. It kind of um, seems to have normalized the idea that. Um, taking time off to, you know, nurture your new family, your new team, your new home team is a really important thing that's important to everyone, not just women in society. And, and so I think that there are other behaviors similar to that, but that one is the most standout to me. I think that we really started to, to witness greater changes in mindset when that started to become a norm when paternity leave started to become a norm are there so, any others that you can think of that have like really influenced kind of our attitudes towards 
um, women in this industry, like, like points that maybe if we were more aware of them, we could leverage them better. Hmm. Well, but just, just to follow up on the paternity leave and, and any sort of life event like that, I mean, the stigma surrounding construction for so long has been, you, you can't leave the field operations, you, you'll miss something, you know, and, and there's so much of that. And what we're trying to really impress is that you can never get that time back. So even if your paternity leave is one week home or two weeks home or a month or whatever it is, it's like you never get that time, that special time back. And your job is always going to be there and you have a team. And so, you know, there's more acceptance around teams being, you know, really working together and, and having an understanding and putting the right personalities together so that, you know, there's just more acceptance around that of someone not being there for a week or whatever it is. I think I'm going to grab a hold of that idea that just popped into my head and now I'm going to stick with it. The idea of the home team, right? From a mindset perspective, there we go. It's, it, you've got multiple teams. Everybody's working on multiple teams and oh, by the way, there is a home team. Yeah. Yep. There is a home team. It's great. It's great to hear you say that too. It's a great, great way to put it. Oh, There's we're going to see it all over. You can't forget about because it's so, it, you know, the world is tough now. It's busy everywhere you look. It's busy. People are rude. People are driving crazy. You know, it's like you got to, you've got to tend to the home team or that stuff's just going to continue to to get worse. So it's it's really important that the home team is healthy. I think that we're also, with social media and that kind of safety behind and and um. And um, say it. Anonymity. Thank you. <laughs> it's fostered like a, a seemingly more judgmental, like macro culture. And I think that, you know, looking at the, the home team and, and like pulling it down a bit to like reality and, and not being quite so judgmental is, is something to pay attention to, too. Yeah. And not just the um, home team, the work team with that too, like so judgmental at a macro culture level. It's, I don't think it's healthy. Yeah, it's not, it's definitely not healthy. And, you know, it's, and, and this isn't as a woman in the industry, this is just personal to my journey. Um, Cause you know, one of the things I will say, and on, when I'm on the panel or that I wanted to impart is that, you know, I wasn't even going to say yes when Wendy had approached me about putting this together because I didn't really feel, I felt not judged, but just like, oh, should I be on that panel? I don't know if I, if I accomplished all my goals yet, are people going to judge me for not having the same bio that Wendy has or Marianne has? I mean, they're incredibly accomplished women. Um, they've done so much for the industry. Um, they're just wildly successful, wonderful people. And you know, it's like, am I going to be judged for not having a resume or a bio like them? I don't know. But, you know, I can't let that hold me back. I have a story to tell. And, and if it helps someone and it inspires someone, terrific. That's the goal. That is the goal. Um, but for me to sit back and say no, because I was going to feel like, are people judging me? Cause I don't, you know, don't do all these industry things and haven't had a chance to yet. That's, that's really what I want to impart too, is, I, you know, just because I'm not where I am, where I thought I would want to be today career-wise, doesn't mean I, I don't have an ultimate goal. I have an ultimate goal and I will get there. It's just going to take me a little longer. So, yeah, I mean, it's hard to not feel like in this world, you're going to be judged every time you turn around. It is. And that part right there, that emotion, well, that, that jumble of emotions that you kind of took, because there's a lot there, right? There's insecurity, there's fear, there's uh, th there's a lot that you just um, compiled into one, one or two sentences. But I think it's important to actually talk about that in the context of this particular summit. Because I know that most people, I'm going to toss a percentage, even though I didn't take a poll, I would say that 99% of the people walking in there have those same feelings. 
because yeah. we're constantly looking at others for the benchmark and it's just a part of human nature and we do it. It's what we do with that that makes the difference, right? But the this summit is different than almost every other conference I've ever been to. The the welcoming vibe. It's like, yeah, you're you're here because you want to expand and then bullet out whatever it is, your horizons, your knowledge, your right. network, your education, your blah, 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 right? You like fill in the blank, like a Mad Libs. You're here because you want to expand what? And um, everyone's going to have pieces and parts that that feel a little less because that's that's our nature. But this group of people, this vibe, this camaraderie openness that that's here at the Women Who Build Summit is, I hope that that anyone who hasn't been to the summit before can walk in and maybe say to themselves, like, not only am I here to expand my added in, but everyone is here for the same reason and welcoming everyone to help reach that same reason. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you know, I think Nancy uh, Greenwald has just done, she's done an incredible job at the Institute and with this by surrounding herself with these incredible people, women, these, this, these teams of women that, you know, at the people at the Institute and in the industry to get this event. Um, you know, there's a huge group of passionate women that have gotten this event from zero to 60, really. Um, and that in and of itself is just so inspiring and just, you know, like you said, it shows how much support and camaraderie and just how uplifting and, you know, the event will be and is. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned um, Nancy because I've gotten to to be able to work with Nancy quite a bit. And it was Nancy and Carolina yeah. together. I, I think the story is Carolina went, da -da -da, wanna have a, a women's summit. And Nancy says, yes, of course. And I'm like, here we are now, you know, a few years later. But Nancy's superpower, I think, is her ability to say to someone, you know what, that's a great idea. And and then like help, she's, she's a great, I wish I was better at this. Usually when there's something that I wanna do or I think is a good idea, I'm more likely to be a bit of a control freak about it. Like, oh, it needs to be this way or that way. And I don't have to do everything myself, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much like, okay, this is the desired outcome, bam, 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 bam. And Nancy is much more free and able to be kind of, Lucy, like she, she's, it's a superpower and, and she really empowers and elevates so many around her because she's got this great way of pulling ideas out and then helping people see what's possible. Like she's not a, she, she, she doesn't really say no. She says, how can we make that happen? I wish yeah. more people were like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wish I was more like that. I know, I know. Like, all right, let's figure this out. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is it's really great and I do think that, you know, I do think this event has a huge impact on I think it's had a huge impact on women and their involvement in the industry. I I really do because there is so much support that comes out of it. Um I think that it just it, it's going along with the trajectory of the industry where there are more women coming in to the field, to the field, I mean, to the industry. And um, I think this event, it will just continue to help with that. 